it's me dynamite biz yeah this is how i look and um it just took a while because i was having a bit of trouble with my microphone blue snowball it it really makes no sense it's not even blue it may be shaped like a snowball but really it's not blue Anyway, thanks to all of you who have been um, subscribing to me. I have seven subscribers. Woohoo! Yeah, I know that's not much. I've seen other channels. Prehistoric News has 7,204 channels. Gaming Beaver has millions of them. So does Nika Higa and all sorts of other channels. But at least it's an achievement for me. Among my friends' YouTube channels, I've got a most view, 252. And thanks for everyone who's been watching that. And now, instead of just ranting on, let's just get to my short story, which I pre-recorded on GarageBand. It's called Carnivore. You see? See? Yeah, so anyway. Um, I'm, you're not going to see my face during the entire recording. I'm so ashamed. Just joking. I really would be... If I were you, I'd really be bored seeing that my face all through the whole recording anyway go dinosaurs hey i can see through the shirt and the audio is still working the heart was all hurt fidgeted uneasily they smelled danger but where was it they weren't careful the male run right into it the herd leader a huge male Organized them into a defensive position that was males on the outside, young and female on the inside. Hoped that it would be sufficient for defense. It was wrong. The carnivore watched as its prey organized itself into a defensive position. It would be easier to pick them off. It would try killing the herd leader standing off at the front. It was easy because of his size. The danger seemed to have passed when Hardisaw heard. They were relaxing and breaking formation. The leader thought that the danger had passed. He thought wrong. In fact, it was the last time that he had ever thought. Too fast for anyone in the herd to follow, a beast black as the night around them struck and camouflaged against the night, dragged it off into the trees. The next year, nothing. There's no other dinosaur for miles. That meant the carnivore had no food. He had eaten last about two weeks ago. That too was just a small meal. Had to migrate from his homeland to the plains in search of food. It was said that the rainforests were way, way more plentiful than the plains which were his home. However, he had to go through the desert first. He could stay without water for two days, and oasis occurred that regularly. Not seen a single animal for days. He could starve. Another oasis could be seen ahead. If he did not drink for another two days, he could dehydrate and die. He could catch, he may even be able to catch prey. Brockery the Ankylosaur was thirstily drinking at the oasis, just before he had eaten some of the vegetation around it. He would have to move his heavy body on. He was traveling to the lush rainforest for food. Many dinosaurs were. He had to watch for predators, especially the giant ones. He didn't know that one was tracking him. Prey! The carnivores spilled prey to Oasis just ahead. If he was lucky, he could, have had, he could have a proper meal after weeks. Then he could reach the rainforest without having to eat. He moved forth to hide within the vegetation. A predator. Broccoli smelt a predator. Wasn't afraid. Must be a raptor or something small like that. Raptor attacks were extremely frequent and more frequently when the raptor is running off with broken teeth, broken them on Broccoli's armor. His half ton tail club of solid bone and his spiky armor could take care of it. Why should he leave anyway? It was very comfortable. Had to move. He knew that. He decided to go tomorrow. He, now he decided to stay. Besides, it was late. Settled down to sleep. A deep sleep. His big mistake. His prey was sleeping. That made the predators work easier. First, 
he cautiously stepped forward to the lake and drank. It felt like swimming. Why shouldn't he? He could swim very noiselessly. His mistake. He silently slipped in, but as his tail entered the cool water, the tip fell with a loud crash. Alarmed, he ducked under water. He could hold his breath for five minutes. He decided to do so. Splash! Brockley awoke with a start. He bellowed at the water. He had to go. He'd sleep elsewhere. He only needed a little sleep. Three hours of sleep would suffice for him. Those three hours, he would sleep deeply. He began walking away. As he walked, he wondered what had made that splash in the night. The predator cautiously moved its nose and eyes above water level. Saw nothing. His prey had moved. He blinked. His prey was moving, so was he. He got out of water and gave a loud roar in the direction of the rainforest. Turned towards that direction and charged. Night was falling. If there was any time to hunt by his black scales, it was now. As he ran, he moved another roar. Broccoli shook with fear at the two rows. The predator, whatever it was, was much more than a raptor, as he thought it could be. He would have to fight extremely hard to defeat it. It could be his last fight. Because here, if you win, you live. If you lose, you die. The predator charged towards the direction of his prey, roaring loudly all the while. He could tackle an ankylosaur. He could tackle anything in this bait of hunger. If he failed, he'd die of starvation, or he could die of a flesh wound. Even so, if he proved victorious, he could die of a wound from its club tail. Brockley fell into defensive position. He crouched and lifted his massive, heavy tail. Could hear roars and footsteps getting closer. Loud, throaty roars and earth-shaking footsteps. He couldn't see the thing. It must be black. He thought angrily. He swung his tail down. A loud wail. He hoped he had broken its knees. It's the predator's toe. His toe was crushed. He retreated and looked at his toe. It's crushed, obliterated, no more than a mangled piece of meat. He ate his own toe in desperation and spit, spat the claw out. He attacked again, this time at the ankylosaur's side. Moved his nose there and hoping for the best, he pushed and flipped it over. Brockley was vulnerable. He was flipped over, his unarmored size exposed to the predator. He was oddly calm. He knew he would die. He moved his club upward with full force and heard an almighty crack. He had broken its ribs. He was ready when two minutes later, after all the painful wailing, the huge jaws descended close around his throat. He was ready for death when he applied force to snap his neck. A sharp flash of pain was all he felt, and then all went black for him. His ribs! His ribs had snapped. The predator staggered back, howling in pain. He returned and to hurt the ankylosaur, applied pressure extremely slowly on his neck. He could eat. He was gloating, but this would be his last meal. The wound brought the ankylosaur on his rib. Has made, was making him lose strength. He could be killed. The sun rose over a pack of scavengers pecking at sca scraps of meat and an ankylosaur skeleton. And next to that, from a black predator with broken ribs, the victim of an ankylosaur's final strong push of strength. Just joking, I wasn't just wearing this. All through, you'd think I'd have better things to do, right? Like, maybe, I don't know, whatever. Oh, look, a butterfly. Okay, that's just stupid. I just took that line from nigger I have to see if I have ADHD. Anyway, I'm going off point. How do you like this story? If you like it, leave a like, obviously. If you don't like it, don't leave a like. Don't even leave an unlike. I hate unlikes. I never unlike anything. Except that stupid videoing. They said they found a real dinosaur and one guy just came rah rah. Anyway, by the way, one more update about Jurassic World. Its sequel's coming in 2018. So, um, yeah, Jurassic World 2 is coming in 2018. 
so if you well thanks for subscribing if you have subscribed if you haven't subscribed obviously subscribe okay thanks okay that was all what the heck did i just do and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel dynaman viz